Hey everybody, welcome back to the Hyrith and Other Words podcast. I am your host, Timothy Mangle, and we are back for another episode. And we are in a new location. If you are watching the video version of this, I'm sure you're aware that this is different than uh, how it normally looks. If you're listening to the audio, I don't, I'm don't. i pretty sure that you probably can't tell. Let me know if you just listen to the audio version, if you can tell uh, if we've moved locations. But uh, yeah, I mean, we haven't moved much. I'm literally in the same room. I've just shifted uh, yeah, 45 degrees up against a different wall. And uh, yeah, I just I just wanted something new. Um, so I hope you enjoy it. And there's some stuff there to look at and all that stuff. I'm sure I'll talk about them in the future and, and whatnot. But uh, yeah, man, I am. Uh, I know I say this a lot and I, I feel like then I say this a lot, but I am very excited to talk about, um, yeah, what we're going to be talking about today and just really start on this series that we're, we're going to be going through. Um, so this is the first real kind of formal series that we're going to be doing. It's starting this week and it's going to go the next two episodes, so three in total. Um, and it's called The Image We Bear. That's the name of the series. And uh, so this is the episode about the soul. Um, I'm going to be breaking them down into uh, each week we're going to be doing the image we bear, the soul, the body, and the spirit. Um, yeah. Uh, so before we dive too far into that, I just kind of want to um, explain to you, you guys at home, where this came about in my life, and and kind of how I approach whatever it is that we're going to be talking about today. Um, yeah. So. Uh, in 2000 at the end of 2019 i started um like towards like the fall i started working on um a book of poetry called when the soul meets itself it's actually all the way up there if you have a gander um and uh again the, the book is called when the soul meets itself and available online i'll, I'll link it somewhere but um yeah, when I was working on that book, I I was having conversations with people and, you know, I found myself asking a question that I, I really wasn't expecting to find myself asking. And it was, well, what's the difference between the soul and the, the spirit? And is there a difference? Um, you know, because when I'm talking to people, I and I've said this multiple times on the podcast, the, the words that we use, we use them for a reason and you know, even if we don't fully understand why we're using them, I, I believe there's a subconscious part of our, our brain that knows. Because think about even when you when you communicate, there's parts of your brain that you know, or there's there's parts of when you're forming a sentence, you know when you're using the proper words in there, and, and you can feel when a word isn't right or something like that. So there's a part of us that that has a sense of when we we know that we're using the right word, and so I, I really started to focus on. Where did people start when they, when they talked about their soul or when they talked about their body and when they talked about their spirit? What were the, you know, um, different dynamics or different experiences that they were saying that those different aspects of themselves were experiencing? Um, and that that was a really fun. I mean, I mean, it's still going on, but I, I love this experiment of just listening to how, I mean, you can even do it with yourself of when you're having conversations with people, just naturally speak and, and notice how, what you talk about, if you talk about your soul or your spirit or, or any of these things. Um, so yeah, while I was kind of going through that time, I was reflecting on this Bible verse. Um, and it's, Man, it's it's such a fascinating, fascinating verse because it's you know I'm like I said I'm going to be doing three episodes just on this idea that I I'll, I'll expand upon. But this Bible verse I could just I could do you know this whole season could be on this whole podcast could be about just this this little two verses in the the first chapter of Genesis. So I got my handy dandy Bible over here on this nice little shelf. <laughs> um, 
Wouldn't it be funny if I grabbed that and, like, the whole thing collapsed, like, everything? Ah, I jinxed myself. Anyways, I don't know if... Well, there, just look at the words. Apparently, I believe I can jinx myself. <laughs> um, anywho, we're going to be reading from the, the Bible in uh, Genesis chapter 1. So, I feel like I always go back to Genesis or, or like, the early chapters of Genesis. And, and the reason that I do that is because it's it's the best information we have about the beginning of our species you know obviously there's evolution um or scientific evidence of um our life and all of those things and they're all beautiful but they explain more so of how reality works it doesn't necessarily give you the why or necessarily the depths of a human being that really are beyond scientific understanding at this point because you can't measure something that you don't know the tools to measure those things with or even the you know the the i want to say barometer in which those things would be measured with you know that science hasn't gotten there yet maybe it will but i also believe that you can figure out the depths of these things through contemplation through through meditation through prayer and all of those things and i believe that that's what the people who wrote the book of genesis did and again as i talked about uh last week or two weeks ago rather on the storytelling episode you know the the story of genesis was verbally passed on for hundreds untold years from story like just telling it verbally and so it's it's very important and it's it 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 seems important enough for all of these people to memorize it and to pass it on to you know for so long um, yeah, and so this is one of the first verses of that whole st story, that whole song, and so it's, you know, it's, it's the beginning, it's building, it's trying to catch your attention, it's saying the important things, that's, that's why I always go back to the beginning of Genesis. I don't know if you, if you wanted that, but there you go, you got why I do that. Um, yeah, and, and, yeah, so we're going to be reading from Genesis 1, 26 to 27. Yeah, so it's it's two verses, man. It's it's so short, but it's so powerful. There's just so much in there. Um, so yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it a read. Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the heavens and the livestock, and over all of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image, and in the image of God he created them. Male and female, he created them. Man, and there's, I mean, obviously it looks very simple, and that's, you know, when we always talk about, you know, what is God, the first thing is always it's, you know, creator um and and obviously that's that's reflected here but it's it's not so much about god as creator in this moment that stands out to me it's more so how he created us and the the yeah that the thing that keeps coming up there is this image right it says it at the end there and, and at the beginning as well this idea of let us make mankind in our image and there's multiple in that first line there there's multiple usages usages use maybe let's go there's there's multiple usages of um plurals in of our or, or we or us this this sense of community or, or yeah and I, i'm sure I, I don't know how many people know this but the word or the notion of Trinity is never really mentioned. Well, the, the word Trinity is not in the Bible at all. Obviously, the notion of Trinity is mentioned in the Bible, but the word itself isn't mentioned in the Bible anywhere, which is so fascinating because, you know, it's it's something that's derived from, from Christian history and and we take this and you can see it in the first chapter of of Genesis where God is saying let us make in our image after our own likeness you know and i just think that that's fascinating and you know obviously i think there's i think that some people would read that as god speaking in a royal sense of you know a, a the royal we or this 
I, whatever that would be, but I really do think that is God and its multiplicities, and also in his singularity, it's a you know it's a it's a paradox there. He speaks that out and creates us in that image. So again, if and okay, so before I, I jump ahead, this in Christian history is called the Imago Dei. Imago Dei, I, I always screw up saying that, but it's Latin Imago Dei, I-M-A-G-O-D-E-I, Imago Dei. It's the image of God. And again, it's mentioned twice in that verse, in the two verses there of, you know, that is the image in which mankind was created. And if you're listening to this, that means that that is the image that you bear. Hence the name of this series the image we bear. And again, so we're going to be talking about the soul. Um, okay, yeah, and I'm, I'm jumping ahead again. <laughs> I'm just excited. Um, okay, so so in, in Christian tradition, this idea of Trinity arises, and again, it's it's not mentioned in the Bible. It's mentioned post the the tales of the Bible. So the in the latest writings in the Bible is about 100 AD. So there's, you know, post that time, everything is just looking back on those stories and interpreting them and, and trying to Im implement what you believe the derived wisdom is from them. So um, as, as Christians, I don't really want to go into this too far, um, I'm actually going to be doing a bonus episode uh, for the Patreon subscribers. So if you would be interested in uh, me talking more about the Trinity and that notion, I know I'm going to be talking about this whole series, but, but really where the idea of Trinity came from, I'm going to be doing a bonus episode called The Eternal Dance. And I'll get to that name in a, in a minute. But uh, yeah, if you want to check that out, I'll be doing that the Wednesday after this comes out. So the Patreon's linked in the bio. Sign up for that. Anywho, so Christians were looking back on the scriptures, Old Testament and New Testament, and they realized that God really had this, this, this three dimensions to it, right? And what was later called Trinity. And they saw it as, you know, the Father God. They saw it as the Son, Jesus Christ, or Christ Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. They saw those three as one that they were you you can't have one without the other and you know i think when we think of anyways I, I i i'm so tempted to dive into that but if you want to get into that uh sign up for the patreon so my goal for this kind of series is kind of to do some overlap between us as individuals and our image that we bear and god the the one that we take the image from, or the image that we reflect, rather, I think is, is a better way to understand that. Um, yeah, and so, so again, you have the Father, you have the Son, and you have the Holy Spirit. And for me, through just kind of working through all of this, it's always, that's always come back to me as the soul, the body, and the spirit. There's always kind of been this, you know, overlay between those things, and and um, I'm going to ex beginning to explain why I see it like that. So, my friends, um, I guess the question then becomes, what is the soul? <laughs> um, which you know, of course, is a, an easy question, not really. Um, and the the reason that that's not an easy question to answer is because there's no Bible verse where it says this is the soul. This is what, what it is. Because you got to think when the people who were experiencing all the things that they were experiencing in the Bible, they didn't have these points of references like we do nowadays in either the Bible itself or other, you know, spiritual texts or in even psychology these old you know people just wandering around the the wilderness writing these tales and and experiencing these phenomenons and all these things 
all they had was just the lived experience in front of them. And that's really why their stories are so powerful and so potent is because they're just living in raw experience. They're, they're not trying to compare it to anything. And that's really something that, you know, us as human beings, when we start to begin to compare things, that's where our world kind of crumbles underneath us. But for these people, the, the, the people who were experiencing the stories of the Bible, they were just living in, in pure experience. They were, they were forming history as we go now through technology and our you know, cultivation of information throughout history, which is all good things. We're able to you know, have the blessing of being able to reflect back on those things. But we have to understand that the people were, who were writing those things were using words as placeholders for bigger things that they didn't really understand. So that's why when people begin to talk about the soul and all of these depths or the, the, the parts of the human beings that they begin to speak in metaphors or, you know, analogies or what have you, or similes, whatever it is, because the soul itself is so ineffable. It's, it's, it's vast. I mean, I don't know if you can see, but I'm doing this with my hands. It's, it's, I'm, I'm expanding. It's, for me, that's how I've always understood, uh, not always, but have come to learn the understand is that it's the part of the human being that is the, it, it is the depth of the human being. Um, and it's really the thing that, that all things grow out of. Now, does that sound familiar? Um, so, a, a, geez, I can't even remember how far back, but I did an episode called the field in which all things grow which essentially i talked about you know uh what is called panentheism or uh the belief that all is in god and i tried to paint this image of you know god existing as this thing that is you know a field or he's the ground of being and all being grows up out of that thing now if we, if, you know, if that is God and we reflect that image, if that is the image we bear, that means that there is a part of us that is the, the ground and the base of our own being. And I believe that to be the soul. Now, why do I believe that? Well, there's a couple of reasons. Um, one is uh, the, there's a Bible verse that mentions the soul. Um, and again, it's hard to find Bible verses where it's like, this is what the soul is. And this necessarily isn't even really talking about the souls. It's more talking about something else, but the soul is mentioned. In uh, Matthew uh, either 5 or 6 or 7, somewhere in that area, uh, Jesus says, the eyes are the windows to the soul. Now, even there, we begin to see this disconnect not again it's not disconnect they're all three and one but um yeah you see the eyes existing because i think a lot of people think that you see with your eyes and and you do you know obviously you do but the the image that jesus is painting here is again it's the eyes are the window to the soul. So it's the eyes are just this thing that the light passes through and that the soul is this thing that really observes it all, which is, you know, it's it's so fascinating. I, I've talked about this on the podcast. I can't think of any time in recent history, but think about when you're explaining how you feel or your reality to somebody else. You know, people always say, I am happy or I am sad or I am hungry. Now think about that when they are, when when you're saying that you're you're affirming two different things there. You're saying that there is an I, and that there is tiredness, or there is sadness, or there is happiness, or or whatever it is. Um, you're you're making two different distinct statements while making one statement. I am tired or, or I keep going back to that because it's early in the morning here, peek behind the curtain. Um, or, you know, I am in love. You know, there's the I and then there's the, the love experience, whatever it is. 
And the I there is the soul. And, you know, it, it has to be according to this Bible verse where the eyes are the window to the soul. So you have the eyes, whatever's happening out here, it passes through this thing, and then it is the soul that absorbs it. Um, yeah, uh, hopefully not absorbs it, is aware of it, is, it is, yeah, observes it. That's the word I'm looking for. See, your brain knows. Um, yeah. And when I think about, you know, I, I really love the notion of the soul because for me, I see it as the overlap between you and, and God. Because when I think about the individual soul and from whence it came or from where it came, it's, for me, it's, Oh, I actually didn't even, I'm going to jump back a second. Sorry about that, guys. Um, you know, I said, uh, seeing that the soul is really the foundation of, of who we are, I said, you know, it's there's a there's this ground uh, isness and I-ness in the soul. And because, again, the, the eyes coming through, or the everything coming through the eyes. Also, there's this book that I'm going to, I just wanted to mention this because it's a uh, great book. Um it's called Echo of the Soul by Philip Newell. Uh, I'll post it somewhere. I'll, I'll link it somewhere. But it's a book I read. It's great. It's this Celtic belief that was migrated into early Christianity, which was that your body is birthed out of the soul. So kind of how a seed gives birth to a plant, that seed... Um, you know, is the soul, and it gives birth to the whole entire body. And we'll talk more about that next week on the body, but I think I wanted to point out that seed analogy because it's really important to me how I, how I interpret the soul. Because when you look at a seed, you kind of just, you know, there it is, right? You're just kind of like, you know, whatever. We don't realize that within the seed is the potential for everything that the seed itself could be, right? And that is what the soul it is. It is the thing that holds all potential. So now, going back to what I was kind of talking about earlier, remember that there is this overlap between the soul. So if you're thinking of a, a Venn diagram, however you say that, you know, you get the two circles in the, the middle, the middle right there is really the soul between man and, and God. That is that is the, the through line window in which between God and man really connect. Um, and obviously God is in everything and, and goes into everything else. But that itself is the doorway and the window in between those two things. It's the direct overlap. So, um, yeah, I was saying all that for, for a reason. But it's, so think about that. If uh, going back to the seed analogy, I remembered. <laughs> so going back to the seed analogy, if God is the thing in which all things emerge out of, that means that God is infinite potential in its, you know, in its most raw state and, and whatever God is in its, in its purest form, whatever that means is that it is infinite potential because it has the potentiality to be whatever. It has all power. It is all knowing that, that it's just raw, pure potential. And if we have that overlap there and think about it again as this seed that is within each human being that it's emerged out of, that, that you and who you are is there's this, this yeah, it's, it's potential. It's ripened with it it's just dripping with who could you be and who 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 are you and i i think about that when i thought about that when i was you know writing the book and doing when the soul meets itself and it's yeah it's you're you're and again i have this this image in my head of god being this infinite field and each individual soul being a, a piece of that, or it's it's a shard of that, you know. Um, it's like when you you break a piece of glass and it uh, it you know it 
uh, cobwebs or not cobwebs, spider webs out, right? And so it does all that splintering. It fractures. It 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 fractals. For me, that that's what the human soul is in relation to God. Again, having that window there, that that overlap. And I think that that's just. I can't think of anything that is more humbling and more gracious to have a soul, to have something that is a direct overlap with the divine, with the creator of of all things. And so, you know, like I said, you know, I, I, I see the father figure in the Trinity as the soul because it's, you know, it's, it's, it's the again we're kind of we're speaking archetypically here and we're we're, we're picturing you know because I know there's a lot of sorry guys a lot of stuff's going on in my head so there's a misunderstanding when people think about the Trinity they think about it in this hierarchical like here is Father Son Holy Spirit heck even earlier when I was listening them off I'm sure I was doing that that motion now. I've been saying this word Trinity a lot and, and using that and, and even reflecting it back to ourselves. What does that word Trinity mean? So Trinity, the, the, I, the, the word itself init, uh, initially began as a Latin word, which all Christian words do, which was P, uh, Pieri Crisis. I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. But it's something along those lines of Pieri Crisis, which means a circle dance. And I, I love that image because, again, it gets rid of this hierarchical notion of God, Jesus, or, you know, whatever it is, and gets gets rid of that and sees the three members of the Trinity dancing in a circle together. So it's like, well, who's leading? Who's who's whatever? It, it doesn't matter. It's a circle. It's it's about the the coming together and the all of thatness of it. So when we think about ourselves and, and, you know, I'm going to be going through this and, you know, I talk about the soul and the body and the spirit. Remember that these aren't things, there's no hierarchy here. These are all things that are just intertwined with each other. You can't have one without the other, you know. So if there would be no eyes for the soul to see anything, then, you know, there needs to be the eyes. So there needs to be the body. There needs to be the spirit, all of these things. It's it's such a beautiful reflection back onto that initial thing. So even when I use the word like father, I know so many people have bad, ten, you know, they have bad history with their fathers or they don't like the idea of a male patriarch, patriarchy that is, you know, implemented itself into Western society in, you know, positive and mostly negative ways, what have you. I want you to think about a father in a purely biological sense. So a father is the one that gives the seed and he's the one that has holds all potential for what a life could you know could be obviously the mother is just as important in that informing those things and so i'm not trying to say one is more important than the other again you it's it's a dance you can't have one without the other but speaking archetypically or or what have you here it's for some reason in the Christian Trinity or in the Christian tradition in the Trinity the there has this image of a father of this one who is supposed to you know lead of supposed to be the one who provides and, and takes care of his family and and you know it's it's again archetypically speaking I know people don't have that experience with their fathers and and they don't they can't you know, I'm not speaking as someone who is foreign from this, even myself, you know, like, but that is what this tradition is handed to, is to someone who is, you know, potential of, and again, think about it that way, is the potential for what could be. And again, you know, obviously, Mary represents that to a certain degree, females represent that as well. But again, we're just speaking archetypically here to the Trinity. So, we have this father figure, or this, you know, the yeah, this God, this this infinite aspect of the Trinity. And again, that's what the soul is to us. It is this own micro-infinity inside of the macro-infinity that is God. So I feel like I just said a whole bunch 
of just whatever. But I want to say something that I feel is more important than just all of the like philosophical or theological or whatever terms I was just throwing out. It's important to connect to the soul because the soul is directly connected with the source of all being. So how do we connect to the soul? Regardless of all of the language and all that stuff around it or whatever, it's it's important to connect to, like I said earlier, the depths of the human being. You know, again, I, I say depth because it's that of which all things grow out of all the potential that could be within a person exists within their soul so think about times in your life when you feel like your soul was really touched for me and you know again going back to the beginning where i was talking about just seeing how other people have experienced it the soul is always really related to deep meaningful experiences slash harmony and I think, you know, deep, meaningful experiences and harmony, they're almost one in the same. Because when you have deep, meaningful experiences, the, the feeling that you are experiencing is one of harmony. And I think that there's a reason that you're biologically uh, created to have to experience that phenomenon when you're doing something that's meaningful. And because there's this correlation between potentiality and meaning. Because think about it this way. If you have infinite potential, like we talked about God being, but you don't form that and you don't put it into something in intentionally, then it's just, it's just, it's infinite wish wash. It's just blah, 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 blah. You know, whatever. It's just, it just is whatever that noise was. So... Yeah, so the, the the soul needs to be formed and kind of have this, you know, it's, again, going back to the seed, it's placed, all of the soul is placed with with everything, <laughs> everything that is for your potential or everything that is for your life or who you're going to be is placed within that. And we're going to be going to talking about that more next week. But it's important to get back to that place, right? Because, again, you have this sitting in the soul. My hand, if you can see it, it represents the soul. And sitting there within it, you have you, have you and your experiences. You have the deep and the, the breath of, of God. And, and up, rising up out of that is everything that you could be. And everything... Yeah, everything that you're supposed to be by connecting back to that. So my encouragement to you this week, friends, is find ways to embody your potential. Find ways to do things that are meaningful to you. And I really think that you'll you'll start to resonate with, you know, I talked about earlier with this idea of the Trinity as this circle dance, as this, this you know, giving and flowing and and epping and flowing and, and just all these things back and forth between these three members of the Trinity. And uh, when we when we don't feel right, you know, what do we say? I feel off or, or something's, you know, not right. And, and it's because we're made in that image of this circle dance. And when there's one part of us that is, you know, off, it's throwing the whole dance off. And that's why we feel, you know, tilted in one way or the other, however you would, you know, express that. And so uh, what I'm hoping to do through this is help us understand these different aspects of our own little trinity so that we can continue to do our dance more properly. So for me, getting in touch with the soul has always looked like, you know, experiences with music and I, I don't know if that's necessarily because I'm a musical person myself or it's because of music itself is inherently meaningful um, but only you really know the depths of which you can be satisfied in your soul um, again it's it's always looked something akin to meaning and purpose and I don't know it's again it's an ineffable thing it's these are words that are we're trying to 
you're trying to explain a, a window that overlaps with God, and it's just like, man, there's no there's no words for it besides my book of poetry available now. Um, yeah, but I I'm just being silly. I would encourage you guys and gals and everyone else to find ways to connect regularly with your soul with the meaningful aspects of your life because i feel like so many people put meaningful things off and they just kind of wait for meaning to happen to them or they look for meaning in places where it's it's not really for them but oh man there is no better or dangerous advice that i could give a person than to explore their own soul but man the journey is is worth it and it's always again it's 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 looked like sitting with that and you know asking yourself what what makes me happy what makes me feel like i i live a meaningful life and how do i implement those things you know i you don't have to go and change everything right away but you can change one thing where you're you're bringing more meaning into your life where you're using your potential for the right reasons and friends what did we say earlier that you are connected to infinite potential so please do not limit yourself by thinking that you are just this whatever or that you are only whatever you are so much more and that is the soul that is the depths of who you are it's you know you know just maybe the last analogy and then we'll end with this it's think about the soul your soul being planted in the soil of god and and whatever that is it's it's nourishing you it's it's getting you ready for you know the season to grow to season of of whatever it is to potentially you know shoot and rocket out of you and, and to be who you you really are friends my prayer for you this week is that you can explore your soul and figure out the depths of who you really are. And I'm sure it will be beautiful and ugly, but the image that you bear is one of beauty. And in the midst of all you're exploring, I pray that you never forget that. All right, friends, like I said, on Wednesday, I'll be doing a... Um, bonus episode called the eternal dance and like i said that's going to be about the trinity um yeah and and some other fun stuff so i would encourage you to sign up for that that's, that's a dollar a month um minimum there's more if the the more you sign up for the higher you sign up for the more benefits you get obviously if you want to check out my book, uh, When the Soul Meets Itself, I'll have that linked in the bio so you can check that out. Um, no pressure. Uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, what's most important to me is that you resonate with who you are, that you find your soul, that, that you learn how to connect to that. Friends, I love you so dearly. Um, I'm so excited that I get to do this. I hope you like the new spot let me know what you think um yeah i ask that you would love oh lord what do i say i ask that you would love yourself oh i ask that you would love the lord with all your soul might i forget what i say what do i say it's something like i would i i want you to love your neighbor as yourself and to love yourself something like that wow all right we're falling apart here at the end and good night <laughs>